Look who stopped by. One of our favorites. One of my favorites. Number 32 in your program, number one in your heart, an eight clap for the man who watched his school save Chip Kelly's job against USC. Maurice Jones-Drew, my colleague from the NFL Network. How are you, MJD? You know, Rich, anytime you can send a Heisman Trophy candidate, possibly the number one overall pick, out the way we did, it's always going to be a great weekend in the household, in the Jones-Drew household. Yeah. You know? Well, Always going to do that. How do you? Because to help me with this, because you know Michigan, Ohio State's coming up um, on Saturday, um, and I sometimes require some form of medication to get through it. What about you? How are you watching UCLA USC? Walk me through the Maurice Jones Drew watch experience. Well, uh, normally I don't really, I can't watch it because I'm either traveling with the Rams or traveling for work. Mm-hmm. This weekend got lucky. Uh, Rams were on a buy, so I got a chance to sit down and watch it. And, you know, I, I have a nice glass of, you know, a flavored margarita. Oh. You know, um, some snacks around. And I just really enjoyed it. Now, my text group, my UCLA group chat yes. will, will be all over the place, right? It's all over, you know. Are you the hot- voice of reason? Mm-hmm. Are you the voice of reason in that text chain? Are you the voice? Like, what, what's your voice in this text chain? Text chain? I, don't, I'm I, don't, Michigan, I don't even think I'm in a Michigan text chain. I've got one of those, you know. It just keeps buzzing. So yeah, I don't even speak in. I just read all the comments, and I may put an LOL in there here, there. Oh, okay, <laughs> right. But then, but the reason I don't speak in is because I'm normally yelling at the TV. <sighs> like, why are you doing that? What are you doing? How do we let him get this up? Why are we allowing him to scramble up in the pocket and throw the deep pass? Right, even though you know they had three yards rushing. Right, so you know how it is. You you become more of a fan of it. But I'm excited. Those kids played their hearts out. They played really well. We kind of been battling with the quarterback thing all year, but you know, at the end of the day, your season's always good if you beat USC. And then we we play Cal this week in another rivalry that a lot of people don't know about. So hopefully, we can dominate them as well. Do you think Chip deserves to stay? No, yeah, I think so. Um, I, I a lot of people UCLA is completely different than SC or Michigan. You know, you're part of the UC system, and uh, the UC system. There's some there's some things that you have to kind of work around more than uh, most schools. I think Cal's dealing with the same thing as well. And uh, he's done a, I thought he's done a really good job. They, they've recruited well. They've got some players in there. You just got to keep going. And so, uh, to me, I, I like what Chip is doing there. I love their new D.C. Uh, it's Anthony Lin's son um, who's doing an awesome job. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully we can keep him because I'm sure he'll be up for some head coaching jobs soon. And what a what a great weekend for UCLA writ large, MJD, after beating USC. Dorian Thompson Robinson gets his first career start knowing he's getting it all week long, pretty much. Um, and, and looked far improved from the guy who got uh, eviscerated by the Ravens in his first start. What what do you think the Browns can do with DTR from here on out with a championship ready defense? Otherwise, yeah, I think they need to continue to to force him to get try to push the ball down the field. I love that they have Amari Cooper there for him, someone he can lean on, uh, David and Joku as well. But it's going to be the Cleveland's always going to be a running game first, and then play action pass, throwing the ball down the field. And you want to with that type of defense they have, you want to run as much as you can shorten the game, then allow DTR to kind of grow throughout the game. You, you've seen that a lot with a lot of young quarterbacks. But the th- and I think the difference with DTR is that he's seen a ton of football. He's seen a ton of different coverages. And he can utilize his athleticism. And if he can utilize his athleticism, uh, that'll be another, you know, thing for the Cleveland Browns to keep going and, and to get first downs and possibly score touchdowns in the red zone. So as long as he keeps getting comfortable and they keep progressing him throughout the offense, I think DTR will be fine for him. And, you know, I just started the show by saying the AFC is wide open in a way that I don't think the NFC really right. is. Like, we could we could, we could, could pretty much say who the final four of the NFC weekend um, is going to be for the divisional playoffs, right? Right, they might be a surprise, but you're 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 looking at Dallas potentially beating the NFC South champ to maybe make it Dallas at Philadelphia with the Lions and Niners having at it themselves, unless there's some other rearranging of those deck chairs. The AFC is different. If you could put your marker on just one AFC team, it would be which entering Thanksgiving weekend. 
Ooh, well, after the Chiefs on Monday night, yep. which I thought they they dominated the game to lose that game because of the drops, I'd have to say the Baltimore Ravens. I think the Baltimore Ravens, even though they lost Mark Andrews and there's a hope that you can get them back, the way their defense is playing, uh, the way Lamar Jackson is playing, the way they're running the football, and they have five first-round receivers now. They may not be the household names they once were or, or the, the first-round picks that we thought they'd end up being. They still have a ton of talent in that receiving room. And uh, to see the way Lamar is playing right now with that defense and you have the greatest kicker of all time, to me it just seems like if they're in a game, you know that your kicker is going to have a 90% chance of making that type of kick no matter where it is on the football field or what weather you're in, um, and you have a, you have a chance to win. So this may be the first time, Rich, too, in the five years of Patrick Mahomes, in the six years of Patrick Mahomes being the starting quarterback, that the Chiefs may not be the one seed in the playoffs. That's a big kicker too. If they now they have a, a a favorable schedule down the stretch, and they may still get that one seed, but imagine that if Patrick Mahomes has to have a road playoff game, which would be the first time in his career he does that. Yeah, I, that that is the case. I mean, I I believe there may have been one of the seasons in that stretch where they weren't the one seed, but wound up without without being you know, but but got the benefit of having the one seed bounced in time for them to still host an AFC championship game. I think the Titans might have been one of them. Uh, yes, that was it. But you know, I I hear you. That said, had you know MVS grabbed the touchdown, um, or Justin Watson squeezed the fourth and twenty five ball that hit his hands. I mean, I could keep going on and on. I know Kelsey might have um, contributed with a fumble in the red zone. I don't know. The Chiefs The Chiefs are still the Chiefs. And you look at the rest of the schedule, the rest of the way, you're, you're looking at 12, 13 wins, which still may be good enough for the one seed. You know, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. I think the Chiefs, the, my, my only concern is they lead the league with 26 drops. We heard that over and over on the Monday night thing. But it's, it's not just the drops. It's the critical drops, right? MVS, that's a critical drop to win the game. You drop that or a third down drop early in the game. Um, it's just, it was a Kelsey had a third and two drop that got him to fourth and two, right? And he's able to complete that. Is this the drops in the critical moments that kind of take the, the momentum and the energy out of the offense um, as they get going? And yes, you have Patrick Mahomes and yes, he can overcome a lot, but eventually those drops are going to come back and bite you in the behind. And, and I just, I, I don't know when that's going to happen or, you know, does that happen in the divisional round? Does that happen in the AFC championship game? Does that happen late in the season in week 17 and 18 where you lose a game that you shouldn't lose so that you can get the one seed? I just don't know. But there's just been too many consistent drops by this receiving core and these players on the team. My colleague, NFL Network's Maurice Jones-Drew, who's going to be on NFL game day kickoff Friday um, in, at 1 Eastern time in advance of the Dolphins-Jets Black Friday game on Prime Video right here on the Rich Eisen Show. And it's so crazy to predict stuff, man, because prior to the season, if I told you the Jaguars would be in first place entering the Thanksgiving weekend, you'd say, yep, that I can see. But we'd be talking about them coming off of a destruction of the Titans that had Mike Vrabel fielding questions about his job security. And they would be going into Houston needing to win this to avoid a sweep at the hands of the Texans who would take over first place on Thanksgiving weekend. Now, that's the rub. What do you think about this current game for both teams in the AFC South, Maurice? Uh, Rich, listen, it, even when I played back in the day, the Houston Texans were really good or we were really good. It didn't matter. That game was always tough for the Jacksonville Jaguars for whatever reason. Um, and this is, this is one of those ones where they lost 37 to 14 early in the year. And as a young team, and I'll say this, I think the Jags offensively, uh, have the most talent in the NFL. I think the Jags defensively have one of the most complete defenses in the NFL. The question that, well, the thing is that they're young and they're still learning how to play together. Um, and as they continue to grow, you know, they're going to have to go through some adversity. Well, this is going to be one of those adverse moments against the Houston Texans team that you lost to that put 37 up on your defense that stifled your offense, which we saw the Niners do a couple weeks ago. How can you handle the, the success against the Tennessee Titans? How can you prepare this week to go into Houston with a young quarterback? Who's a, an MVP candidate playing lights out, even though he turns the ball over, he finds a way to win. 
How can you go out there and 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 beat a team that's kind of riding uh, a lot of momentum? Now that comes down to your quarterback play. It comes down to how you're going to utilize Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk. How are you going to get Travis Et in the ball? And then Evan Ingram has to step up and have a huge game, I think, in this one. And then defensively, you have to be able to cover Tank Dell. I think uh, they're going to get they possibly can get Pierce back this week, who has one of the the greatest angriest runs against the Jags yeah. last year, right? So. There's going to be a lot of situations for the Jags defense and offense to step up and make plays. But I think the end of the, the end of the day is this, and, and no one's talked about this. The Jags threw out, um, well, I think it was OTAs, the Denver Broncos cut Brandon McManus, who's still one of the top kickers in the game. And he's, he's been kicking very well. If it comes down to a field goal and the Jaguars have an opportunity to win it, I think they have the edge in that one. I don't know. Well, the Texans have a running back who can kick it. They do, right? Well, listen, Rich. And I, and let me let me say this too. The whole the whole um, devaluation of the running back position. Yes, sir. You know, again, the more we can do, we can do everything. We can block. We can run. We can catch. Now we can kick. What else do you want us to do? Pay us. It's time. <laughs> All three phases, man. All yeah. three phases. <laughs> it is unbelievable. Did you ever kick? Uh, only in uh, Pop Warner. Never got a chance to do it after that. So, what 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 was the Pop Warner Maurice Jones Drew field goal range? What was the range? Oh, it. I mean, oh. It, we had to score. <laughs> it, we had to score. It wasn't. It wasn't good. I was the punter and the kicker. Okay. I say, sixth grade year. We and every time we'd punt, they'd tell me to act like I would run and then punt it or just take off and run. <laughs> uh, field goal kicking was a little spotty though. And I under like I said, I understand what like if the game is on the line, how that heart rate gets high. You got to be able to bring it down and, and and focus on the things. I miss majority of them though, for sure. <laughs> so. so let me just revisit this before I <laughs> let you go here. So you're saying Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, Ridley Kirk, Jones, Zay Jones, and Evan Ingram. That's the best offensive collection of weaponry in the National Football League. They're just young, and that's why we don't talk about them as the best weapons. Are you really you you're saying that? I mean, if you look across the league, Rich, look at look at some of the, the teams and what they have. You talked about three receivers, uh, two possible number ones, and Christian Kirk is a thousand yards receiver and Calvin Ridley. Evan Ingram comes in as an, another receiving threat at tight end. Zay Jones is a deep threat who has made some amazing catches and big plays throughout his career. Uh Travis Etienne at one point was leading the league in broken tackles. I don't know if he's still doing that at all now, but he still has the home run hitting ability. And you have a quarterback who can make every throw and run and run the ball as well as he went for the Tennessee Titans, two passing touchdowns and two rushing. Just, just tell me any other team that has that right now. Hmm. What you got to, you can chime in TJ. The Lions maybe? The Lions? Uh, uh, who's their second, who's their second receiver? I mean, they got Amon Ra. It could Sam be Jamison Williams, end. right? Laporta. Uh, Laporta. But he's the tight end. Oh, he's talking the about the whole, receiver. hold on. Yeah. Okay. What about the Eagles? When Goddard's healthy, yeah, well, yeah, I I would say the Eagles are close. What about the Cowboys, the are close. But who's their third receiver? Who's the Eagles' third receiver? Ooh, That's a good one. Boy. Okay, yeah. let's keep going. Okay. Um, Cowboys have C.D. Lamb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the the you know uh, Tony Pollard isn't. I mean, he finally scored a touchdown this last week for the first time since Week One. Right. That was so, that was hasn't been good. No, Etn Etn's a Pro Bowl running back. Uh, so we, they, you got to have a Pro Bowl running back and a young stud quarterback, right? I mean, who else? Let's keep going here. What about the Dolphins? What about the Dolphins? What about the Dolphins? The Dolphins have uh, – who's their tight end? I don't know who their tight end is. And okay. I think their, their two okay. receivers are Tyreek Hill and – Does it and matter Waddle. who their tight end is? Does it matter? You know what I mean? I mean, like, okay. if we're going to say complete, we got to have someone at the Niners. tight end and doing something. Niners. Niners. The Niners are close, but I think Zay Jones is better than Jennings, and that'd be your third receiver in that situation. Brock, you got anything here? You're, you're awful quiet over there. No, I'm just thinking. Who else? I mean, I want to say the Patriots, obviously. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice. But, um, Seattle, uh, Seattle has Seattle has a, a nice trio of receivers, but I don't. I think uh, Evan Ingram is better than whatever tight end they put out there. Right, the Fant. Or, right, Will Disley. Disley. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um. Let's see. Okay. Look at you. Hey, I, I mean, we, we haven't mentioned the Chiefs because, all right, what yeah. do you think of that, man? You know, do you think when it all comes down to it, the Chiefs' lack of deep threat 
is going to finally come home to roost or passing game threat is going to finally come home to roost in a way that it didn't last year? Is that really what we're thinking right now? I, I, just, really? I just hope that they develop those guys. Uh, I think Rasheed Rice is a really good player, but he needs to develop more. Sky Moore has to show up more consistently. Um, Kadarius Tony's a great weapon, but how do you utilize, how do you put him out there? Do you put him out there as a runner, receiver? Like, what is he for you consistently? Uh, to me, you know, everything else is about Travis Kelsey, right? Like, he has to be the the straw that stirs the drink uh, for Patrick Mahomes. So, I, I, I trust, and I guess this is the other thing. I trust Andy Reid. I love what the Chiefs have done on the last couple so much so that the Chiefs have like jumped up in one of my in my top five favorite teams. They've oh. jumped up at number oh. three, okay. which is insane. But I just don't know how. I'm sure it will happen. We have to wait to see. I just don't know how they're going to do it, though, this year. So the, the two in front are Jacksonville and the Rams? That's one and two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they paid me They paid me the most, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know all about the Benjamins. I get hey, it. Man. I get it. All right, MJT. Oh, by the way, I would have had Burrow not gotten hurt. You could put the Bengals in there. Certainly with this kid Tanner Hudson now catching the passes. Yeah. Like he's doing at the tight end position in Cincinnati, right? Yeah, but, I think yeah, Cincinnati okay. would have been. In there you for made sure. a stop and think, which is all I all I ever ask of you, MJD. But you always do that for me. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for the Zoom. Have a great uh, Thanksgiving, and we'll see you on NFL Network on Friday. You guys too. Enjoy it. You got it at MJD on social media at m dot Jones Drew thirty two on Instagram and on NFL Game Day Kickoff Friday one Eastern, two hours in advance of kickoff of Prime Video's first ever Black Friday game, Dolphins Jets. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.